Turning Our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about drying grain. Well, Brian, when we're thinking about drying grain, primarily on our farm, we're talking about corn. There are many different crops that farmers may harvest where the seed is still a little bit too moist to store long term. So in order to get that grain in proper condition for storage and for selling to different processors, farmers have to take that moisture out by drying that grain down. So for us on our farm, corn harvest means let's get the dryers going because chances are we're gonna have to dry some of that corn down. Yeah, so as we're standing in a field of soybeans, soybeans we can let dry naturally. Same thing with wheat, same thing with a lot of crops out there. But with corn, the corn is getting ready late in the fall, and by the time the corn would actually get dry itself, well, we might have two feet of snow on the ground. So we need to take that corn out. The other thing is, if we let corn naturally dry down to the point that it needs to be, then a lot of times that corn starts shelling off real easily in the combine header. In other words, when we're going out combining, we lose a bunch on the ground, and we don't want that to happen either. So for those reasons, we harvest that corn when it's a little bit on the moist side. A lot of times 18 to 20 percent moisture is where we like to target the moisture for harvesting but we need to dry the grain down to 12 to 14 percent to properly store in a bin so it doesn't spoil. Now what some farmers will do who don't have grain dryers on their own farms or maybe their grain dryer just can't handle that many bushels all in one shot they'll haul grain to a grain elevator in town and that grain elevator will have a large dryer where they can dry grain very quickly as it's coming in from multiple farmers. And this is a way that a farmer could start harvesting. His grain's just a little bit too wet, but he's got some place to go with it. When you've got moist grain, what's going to happen if you put that in a bin is you're gonna have some spoilage if it sits there very long. Now temperature certainly comes into play as well. If it's really cool out, say it's 40 degrees and you're harvesting wet corn, no big deal, but let's just say that you get a nice daytime high of 80 degrees. Now you've got warm temperatures and moist grain. That's a recipe for disaster. So in those situations, farmers need to get that grain dried relatively quickly. Well, the other thing that farmers will do is they'll wait a day or two until the temperature cools down. Then they'll blow cold air into their grain bin to cool the temperature down. It takes a while for that grain to cool way down, but that's one way that farmers will do it. Or they'll even talk about, I'm gonna freeze my grain. So if it's down to 10 or 20 degrees outside and they can pump all that really cold air in there, when they drop the temperature down below 32 degrees of the grain, even if it is a little moist, we typically don't have a lot of spoilage or bug problems. It's the same thing like putting food in your freezer. You don't have to worry about it. You can store it much longer than if you put it in your refrigerator or certainly if you just lay it on your counter. Now there are a couple of different ways that farmers can dry grain down. Now they can certainly blow hot air through the grain. Maybe they'll have a dryer that'll have a temperature of 140 degrees and blow that hot air through the grain trying to get that moisture to come out. That's one way to dry grain down. The other way would just be to put it in a bin that has an aeration floor. What I mean by this is that the bottom bottom of the bin, the floor of that bin will have holes in it. So air can be blown from the bottom and they'll have fans coming out the top or the side of the bin where they can get air to circulate through all that grain. So without using heat, farmers can just find days where the humidity is not very high and blow air through the grain to try and get that moisture to come out. Well, still, they're using warm air there and it takes a lot more time to dry the grain down with warm air as opposed to with hot air. The other thing I was gonna mention is there are typically two types of processes. There's continuous flow and there's batch for grain drying. So with the batch, pretty simple, you put a certain amount of grain into a dryer and you wait, let's call it five hours, 10 hours, whatever, in order to get enough heat, get the temperature of the grain up enough. Then after that, you're gonna cool that grain down, the moisture disappears. With a continuous flow process, that grain will simply move through that drying system, maybe in as little as half an hour's worth of time. It gets enough heat on it, then you put it into another area where it can cool down. And sometimes even in that continuous flow process, there'll be a portion of that dryer that will cool it right there. So the grain coming out of the dryer is cool, but the point is we wanna heat it up, we wanna cool it back down and kick some of that moisture out. And all of this, of course, costs money. When a farmer has to buy natural gas or propane or whatever it takes to heat that air up to blow through the dryer, that's gonna cost some money. So what happens is if you haul to a grain elevator, for example, they will discount the price of your grain as you're coming in. So let's just say that you brought in some corn that was 20% moisture and the elevator wanted 15% moisture. Well, that's five points of moisture that they're going to dry out. Many elevators may dock somewhere between five and 10 cents per point of moisture. So if you had five points of moisture to dry out times, let's just use a number in the middle, eight cents per bushel. Well, that may be a 40 cent per bushel discount when you bring in that wet grain. Now it all depends on 
which elevator you're hauling to. Some just dock straight cents per bushel. Others take a shrink factor and shrink that grain down because they know when they have 20% moisture, when they dry all that moisture or that water out of the grain, they're gonna have less grain at the end. So they may figure a shrink factor and a certain discount of cents per bushel as well. Well, once again, it's very important that farmers have dry grain if they're going to store it long term. Another thing that's very important for farmers is controlling weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 